Hey, it's t -Pac. I am back in Katawa Shoujo. Um, we left off in a field of dandelions, so... No, not at all. Eyes close. I close my eyes and give in to the irresistible sensation that has been growing inside of me all week long. I float up towards the surface of my- Are you kidding me? Towards the surface of my own life. The pressure of being underwater slowly diminishes. The weightless sensation becomes stronger. I break the surface of the water, lifting my head into the sunlight and inhale deeply, breathing in the fresh air as if for the first time in a long, long while. My lungs fill with oxygen and I open my eyes to see Rin's peaceful, determined face. We walk down the slope carefully and slowly to avoid falling down, Rin in the lead and me a few steps behind. Rin can surely do this. Even if she can't, she's going to pull through. I'm sure that I can keep my head above water too from now on. The sun sets behind our backs, setting the world ablaze in its orange glow. I keep watching the back of the red-headed girl descending the path a few steps ahead of me. If it's only this much, the distance between us is definitely within my reach. Nice. Wow. <laughs> act... Oh. Act... The next act. Act 3. Distance. I guess I should have just continued last time. <laughs> just like five more seconds, I guess. I asked you a question, Akai. I shake my head to fend off the dazedness. The teacher's looking at me as, as, a, as is everyone else in class. Ah, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What is the distance between... Never mind. Different question. Why are you here in this class? To, uh, learn about physics? Yes. Well, no, that... But that's not the answer I wanted to hear. Neither is this. Sorry, still have no idea why my printer does that. To acquire knowledge is the secondary reason for you being in the school. The primary one is to learn the rules of society, the norms and ethics that govern your everyday life. You don't come to school for the classes, you come to interact with other people there. Your classmates who are your equals and the teachers who are your superiors. You learn how to force social con form social contacts and maintain them. In other words, how to be a part of society. The school itself is a microcosm of the entire society. Locke was the one who realized that, you know, school's not just a place for learning. And all of all the kids your age, you guys should know that better than anyone else. He pauses for a moment and lets his eyes sweep over the class to see if the message sunk in. At the very least, it shut everyone up and got them to focus on him, captivated either by his voice or the sudden change of topics from physics to the philosophy of education. However, my classes, as you so aptly put, are a place for learning about physics. I thought it was chemistry. He points at me with the piece of chalk he's holding. So, no sleeping during class. Got it, Nakai? Yes, sir. From the corner of my eye, I catch Zune's scowl and Misha's barely contained giggle. I sink deeper into my seat. After classes end, I'm the last one to leave the classroom. I close the door behind me and quietly make my way to the art room. Club time passes in a relative peace and quiet. I sit in my usual seat next to Rin, but she doesn't seem to be in a talkative mood. She's even more distant than usual. Today we are going to draw still life, and I get to choose from either a vase of full flake flowers or an arrangement of rocks, sticks, and canvas. The teacher encourages us to gather around the preferred motif, emphasizing perspective, texture, and lighting as the key points of this exercise. I look at Rin to see if she prefers one of the subjects over the other, but she just tilts her head, signifying nothing. The club members quickly shuffle their chairs around the classroom to get closer to either the vase or the clutter. Rin and I both pick the flower vase, but only one of us seems to do any work. She's ignoring Nomiya's assignment, just like she suddenly started ignoring me, and has begun doodly doodling something idly with her foot, not really even looking at what she's drawing. I try to catch her gaze, but she's looking out the window. It's making me uneasy. Rin almost looks like she's asleep, but the way she's leaning back against the chair with her legs resting easily on the desk... 
She's now completely given up on the, on the drawing. The more I try to relax, ignore her, and just be myself, the more it feels like I should ask if something's wrong. After club activities, are others and over and others have filed out. Rin gets up from her seats and marches over to Nomiya with unusual determination. I will do it. Nomiya, who, has, who was humming to himself while sorting a box of pencils by hardness, turns around with a mixed expression of friendliness and incomprehension on his face. Hmm? What will you do, my girl? The gallery person. I can talk with that person. At least yesterday I thought I could. And today, too. I think I want to try it. I'm going to go all the way. The widest smile I've ever seen on a person's face lights up with the teacher's features. He is almost literally beaming. Oh, wonderful. I had almost lost hope. Such a hard-headed girl you are, but I knew that sooner or later you'd understand as well. I will call my good friend Sijo Sayonji and arrange a meeting. You'll need to show your, your work to Show her your work so she can estimate it. I told her about you, but obviously sh you should talk face to face. This is so exciting, isn't it? So exciting, I'm sticking my tongue out. Nomi is talking more to himself than to us and walking in circles around his desk, waving his hands w around wildly all the while. He picks up his cell phone from the bre breast pocket of his jacket and flips it open with a stylish movement, starting to look for the number to call. While he searches, he notices me staring and gives me a beaming thumbs up. I shrug back at him, doing my best not to look smug. Nomiya finds the number and makes the call, turning away from us and lowering his voice once it goes through. Even so, I can hear his excited tone. The call doesn't last long. Fabulous. Say is at the art gallery right now. And she said we could stop by right away if that's fine. This is most excellent. Do you have some kind of portfolio to show, Rin? She just shakes her head at the question. Never fear, I've taken some of your, some photos of your paintings. We can bring those and maybe a couple originals with us. Those will be quite sufficient for now. There should be some recent ones around here in the back, right? He pulls out a folder full of photos on, of a desk drawer and charges towards the back where there's a small storage room and extra cabinets for all the materials and tools that our classes and club use. He soon finds what he soon finds what he was looking for and crudely wraps two of Ren's paintings in some brown packing pa paper. Akai, would you carry these to my car? I pick up the two oil paintings. They aren't heavy, but they will make navigation somewhat cumbersome as I follow Namiya and Ren to the parking lot. I didn't even know there was a parking lot on the campus. Namiya has a pretty nice car, not something I'd, ex I'd expect from a high school teacher to drive. Wonder what kind of salaries they earned it. They earn at Yamaku. The canvases are stuffed into the trunk, where they just barely fit. At the teacher's overenthusiastic prompting, I get in the car along with them. Ren answers my questioning stare with a confirming nod and a nonchalant shrug. I guess I've become some sort of an ass assistant for her now. Oh, I I guess his sal went with them. Nomiya doesn't go light on the pedal. The smooth ride just takes about 10 minutes to bring us to the city center, where we pull into a tiny parking lot and get out of the car. I pick up the paintings again, looking around. It's just like any city in Japan, really. Same style of building, same people hurrying here and there, office workers sweating in their suits in the summer heat. The wide tree-lined streets aren't something you see everywhere, though. Maybe they were the are the city's specialty. It definitely has the f the f that feel of a city. Which I thought had already forget, which I had already forgotten. I feel immediately comfortable walking around. I haven't actually been here before. No, in that case, it's about time. It's a great city, lots of wonderful folk around here, and most important of all, a vibrant cultural life. Ah, uh, size place is just around the corner. After turning around. Three more corners, Nomiya stops in front of a door. There is a nameplate in, nameplate in big red letters over it. 22nd corner. Is this really the 22nd corner? Of what? 
It's bothering me, too. I mean, where to start counting and which way do you count? Ren gets worked up over the strangest things. Unlike me, Nomiya ignores her and completely pushes the door open. The gallery is very clean looking. The air, condition, air conditioning makes it cool and very comfortable. The white walls and big windows facing onto the busy street make the whole place feel airy and bright. There's nobody around whom I can see, however. Most of the floor space is empty with only a few, few large tables and a counter for furniture. There are paintings too, of course. A poster advertises an exhibition for an artist I've never heard of. Most of his work seem to be portraits or landscapes done in a more traditional style than Rin's abstraction. Oh, hello. Someone by the bell on the door, the, a lady who looks to be around Nomiya's age, comes from around the corner. She's dressed in a sharp suit, her straight dark hair and a perfect ponytail behind her head. A pair of flashy, expensive-looking eyeglasses frame her eyes. On second glass, I'm not sure of her age anymore. She looks old, and yet not actually old. Sai, hello. She clearly recognizes the teacher, greeting him warmly. Oh, there you are, Sh Shinichi. And so quickly. I take it that these two are your students? Indeed, let me introduce you. This one is Rin Tezuka, the one I spoke to you about, and this healthy-looking lad over there is Hisao Nakai. She takes a long, hard look at both of us, especially Rin. It feels like we're being evaluated, and a worth of some abstract kind is being calculated for us. Her eyes linger for a time on Rin. On her eyes, on her empty sleeves tied in knots, her posture. Sai takes her first impression of Rin with an intensity I've not seen used by anyone else before. Once finished, she smiles amiably. Pleased to meet you both. My name is Sai Shizhon, Sai Shizhon. Sayonji, I am the owner of this gallery. Could I maybe, could I maybe offer you some tea? Oh no, thank you. We're fine. Let's get down to business. I lay the paintings on a tabletop and give uh, to give the gallery owner a better view of Nomia and p a better view on Nomia. I skipped it. Uh, and, and Nomia pulls out his folder of photos. The old lady. St <laughs> Why are you calling? She doesn't look old. Studies Rin's works carefully, absentmindedly brushing her cheek with her fingers while letting her gaze sweep over the paintings. Her eyes remind me of a bird of prey of some sort. They're so sharp and somehow very calculating. She takes her time, slowly going over the paintings in order without uttering a single word. Even the teacher looks very nervous. He tries to point out certain details and other things about Rin's work, but it seems sh like she's not listening. While well, Nomiya and I keep looking at Sai, trying to look for some hint of a reaction on the gallery owner's face, Rin lets her gaze wander around the gallery space. Suddenly, she pipes up. Is this really the 22nd corner? Sai raises her gaze from the paintings to look at Rin, but doesn't answer. It's probably for the best. She takes the stock of Rin's slouchy posture and her dreamy eyes that are again moving restlessly about. The way Rin seems to be detached from a situation that's supposed to be very important for her annoys me just a little, practically holding my breath here. After Sai has gone through all of the Nom all of Nomiya's photos and inspected the two oil paintings I hauled here, she goes through all the material again, this time at a quicker pace. Finally, she gives her verdict. I like it. Though, if you don't mind me saying... You're still a bit immature. Searching for your own direction, perhaps? She picks up one of the photos. Still, just look at this. I can't take my eyes off it. Like a little kitten playing around. That's what your ma art makes me feel like, young lady. Uh, thank you, I think. Nobody has ever said that before, I think. That's all Ren has to say. Something about what the gallery owner says and how she says it makes it sound patronizing to me, but I hold my tongue. <clears throat> anyway, what a wonderful imagination, though, isn't it? I've always said that Tezuka has a great eye for composition and color harmony and technique. Remember, all of these are done with her feet. Of course, we'd need to put some of simpler ones on display, too, for the lay people, right, Sai? The teacher snorts derisively. What? 
You know how those Philistines are. What do they understand about real art? They'd j just be at a loss with the abstractions and themes around here. But it'll generate more pu publicity, and that's good, isn't it? Sai smiles gently at Nomiya's remark and returns back to the paintings. I wonder. To tell you the truth, I just don't know if all this makes an exhibition. Even if I like it, I don't get the feel of a theme, of cohesion. There's no... Ova... Ovri? No, that is not it. That's what it looks like, though. And really, who would expect such a... From a young artist like this... Like the kitten here. Oh, no, no, no. It's definitely doable, especially if we get a few new pieces and touch up some old ones. Uh, I don't mind painting more. I'll do anything. It's a bit of a stretch. Trust me, I wouldn't have come to you if I didn't believe uh, Tezuka was ready. You can see it too, can't you? I know exactly what her kind is capable of, and you know too. Those words give the gallerist lady a pause. A hollow, bottomless look over her takes over her eyes for a moment, as if she was looking through or maybe past Nomiya. She says nothing, but her mouth becomes a tight, flat line, as if stretched. Finally, the moment passes. Is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying. Sai sighs. Sounds really funny. And takes a few steps, walking in a circle as if to help organize her thoughts. She takes another look at a photo of the painting she particularly liked, the one that made her call Rin a kitten. She places her hand over her mouth, lost for words. After a few moments, she shakes her head. I don't know what to say. After seeing you, dear, these paintings of yours, would you excuse us for a moment? I want to talk with your, to your teacher in private for a bit. Sai draws the art teacher aside, and they talk in hushed tones for a while. I can't hear what they are saying, but over her shoulder I can see the lines around the corners of her mouth tighten as she motions with her hands in time with her words. The expression on her face is, what kind of expression is it? I couldn't say. Once they're done discussing whatever they had to discuss, they give one another a serious look. I feel something that goes beyond mere words was mere words transpiring there. They walk back to us. Sai looks seriously at Rin, her left hand reaching as if instinctively towards a pack of cigarettes that's lying on the table. She picks up the pack and extracts one, looks at it absentmindedly as if only now she realizing she did so and puts it back. Finally, she locks eyes with Rin, evaluating her once more. All right, little kitten, I'm going to believe in you. I will put your painting in here. But from what I can see, this is not enough. You don't really have a cohesive theme. And you don't have enough of the good stuff. You're going to have to work hard to actually get something that we can put on exhibit here. I know. It's a good thing my gallery is so small, no? Rin already spends pretty much every free waking moment she has painting. How is it possible to work any hard? Why do you say anything, Hassan? Hassan, what are you doing right now? She'd have to skip classes to do more than she already does. And how can anyone work that much? Silence falls in the gallery after my words. Sai looks at the art teacher who's looking contemplatively at his star student. I look at all three of them, confused. It's doable. What do you mean? I mean the school is special. The board gets puts great value on things such as this. I'm sure I could arrange some leave for her. It's not unprecedented by any means. I'll discuss it with her parents too, but they've been quite supportive. However, it might be a bit of a stretch to get working space for her at the school if she's not actually going to attend classes. Actually, I was thinking about this before. Do you use the place upstairs for anything? N no, I don't. Haven't since back then. It's more like a landfill of, than an at atelier now. Upstairs. I am a small atelier. 
apartment on the top floor of this building, but it hasn't been in use for goodness. It's been so long, hasn't it? Her eyes leap to Nomiya, who has a strange muted expression on his face. Indeed. Do you think... Even Nomiya, in all his brashness, has trouble coming up straight... Coming straight out with the question. Sai, of course, sees through him and throws her, her hands... Throws up her hands, sighing deeply. I guess I can't say no, can I? Very well. I'll lend you the use of that place as well, if needed. It's not like I really use it. Excellent. Now, I, c I knew I could c count on you. Don't celebrate yet. It really is a mess, so don't be shocked when you first see it. However, you can use it as you see fit. Since it's in a... What is that word? Atelier? It already has easels and things like that. You only need your own tools and materials and to somehow clean it up a bit. It's not habit habitable, though, so I can't let you live there. I doubt your school or parents would allow that in any case. Okay. However, it is convenient to crash there overnight if necessary. I won't mind. Ha ha ha! Most excellent, isn't it, Tezuka? He enthusiastically pats Rena on the shoulder, laughing in relief and happiness as if all this good fortune landed on him personally. Sai smiles as well, perhaps more amused by the old teacher's glee than anything else. Oh dear, Shinichi. This really is like back then. Are you sure we have not... We all haven't bitten off more than we can chew. She looks at Rin, who seems to be oddly subdued in s despite all of this. I hope it will be worth it, kitten. She holds out her hand as if to shake Rin's, but realizes the impossibility and quickly moves to pat her on the shoulder. Rin looks back at her silently. Her eye is serious and impenetrable like the dark of night. Okay. I still don't think Rin's that into it, but... Oh well. I think it's gonna be good. I'm interested in seeing the rest of her artwork. Well, I'll continue this day next time, I think. I forgot to time how long I was going for, so... I hope I hit... Uh, 20 minutes-ish? Anyways, thanks for watching.